Hello, my name is Dr Mary O'Kane and I'm a lecturer in psychology and education. I'd like to say thank you to Neath County Council Library Service for inviting me to come and make this little video for you today as part of the Healthy Ireland at Your Library initiative. Um, what we're talking about today is how to support our children's resilience, specifically looking at uh, developing a growth mindset in our children. So first of all, I think we all are aware of how important, important resilience is for our children. And um, particularly in recent times, I think it's been brought home to us that life doesn't always go as expected. And it is so good for our children to be able to um, bounce back, we say, but even claw their way back um, from difficult situations. And um, when life pulls the rug from under our feet, being able to pick yourself up and persevere with life is so important. One aspect of resilience, which is really important, is what we call in psychology, locus of control. And basically, locus of control is either internal or external, and it involves your child's belief about whether they can control the world. So when something goes wrong, when something unexpected happens, do I believe that I can do something to make a change? Do I have power over my world? Do I feel I can control it? Or if my locus of control is external, do I feel there's nothing I can do? I can do nothing in this situation. Very important difference. One aspect that can really impact on a child's locus of control and give them that feeling of you know, power of autonomy is what we call a growth mindset. So growth mindset was developed by a lady called Carol Dweck and she was looking at children's intelligence. So she found that there was two types of internal views about our intelligence and she found most children fell into one or other category for most areas of their lives. The difference of the two she called a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So a fixed mindset is if I see intelligence as being set in stone, I see it as being a fixed quantity. So I might say, feel my intelligence is at this level. And so I might feel, oh yes, I'm very good at something or no, I struggle with that. And, but I see it as something that I have very little power to change. So it's genetic, it's within me. The opposite mindset she called a growth mindset. And these were children who don't see their intelligence as being genetic or set in stone. They see that if we put effort into something, if we work hard, we can learn and grow. Most children, as I said, she found sort of fell into one or other category, although sometimes they might see them, their mindset as being fixed in one area. So I might feel my intelligence is fixed, but maybe I see that from a, a sporty perspective, I can grow. But very often we fall into a pattern. We do it ourselves as adults, as well as children. So this lady, Carol Dreck, investigated what this really means for our children and the impact it has on their lives. So the children that see, have this fixed mindset and see things such as intelligence as being set in stone, they don't really believe that their effort can change things. They don't really see that they can have control over their lives. She did a research study with two groups of children and she spoke to them about memory. So with one group, she told them about the different stages of memory and how that works. With the second group, she spoke to them about how our brains are plastic. And that means our brains are not fixed. Our brains can change and grow as we learn. And the, the neural connections within our brains can change depending on how we use our brains. So this was a relatively short intervention with the two groups of children. But afterwards, she found looking at their views of intelligence, the group that had studied what memory was and the stages of memory saw memory as being something more genetically within us. 
the group that she had sat with and spoken to about how our brains are so powerful, how we learn, how we grow, were three times more likely to believe that hard work and perseverance can make changes in our lives. Two years later, she went back to this group of children and those changes were still there. So really important research in terms of how a little intervention can shift their thinking. So how do we encourage our children to take on more of a growth mindset? Well, one very simple little thing we can do is the power of the word yet. So when our children say, oh, I can't do this, I don't know how to do that, we always add the word yet. I can't do this yet, but I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm developing. I don't know how to do this yet, but if I work hard, I'll get there. I may make some mistakes as I learn, but that's fine. I'm growing and I get there. So remember always the word yet is such an absolutely powerful, powerful word. Another way we can encourage our children to develop more of a growth mindset is to talk to them about mistakes. So many of our children today see mistakes as failure. It's just failure. I got that wrong. It is a mistake and it is failure. If we can step back and talk to them about the fact that mistakes are actually how we learn. You know, it's a learning curve and that mistakes are so valuable because they're how we learn, how we grow, how we progress. It can be really useful to talk to them about mistakes that we have made, maybe made as we were growing up and, and what we learned from them. One aspect of this idea about failure that our children have is sometimes it's as if they're trying to please us. It's as if they feel that there is a right and wrong. And sometimes actually in education, we think we're giving children those messages that you know, there's a right answer to the test or a wrong answer. So if we can get our children to shift their thinking a little bit from this belief that there is a, a simple solution to a problem they face. So when they're faced with a problem, very often our children will think, what should I do? And that's suggesting there is one correct answer. There's a right answer to that question when faced with a problem. If we can try and get our children to instead start thinking about what could I do in a situation? Harvard Business School did some research on this and they found that shifting our focus from the word should to the word could has a huge impact on our children. And if I can give you a little example, um, you may have heard, I think it was back in about 2017, the plane in New York that landed on the Hudson River. So this plane flew out of LaGuardia Airport and they hit a flock of birds. One engine went, next thing the second engine went. The captain of that plane had to make a very quick decision about how he was going to handle that situation. If he had thought, well, what should I do here? The correct answer was probably turn back and land on the runway that he had just taken off from. But instead, he thought about what he could do. He, he saw that there was possibility, that he had options. What potential solutions were there to this problem? And what did he do? He landed that plane on the Hudson River. Not a textbook solution, but he saved the lives of all the passengers on board by allowing himself to take that more growth mindset approach. What are the possibilities? What, what options do I have in this situation? Rather than feeling there was potentially a, a right or wrong answer. So again, when your children are faced with an issue, instead of thinking, what should they do in a situation? Encourage them to step back and think about what could they I do? What are my potential options here? And work through them. It help, will help them develop a more fixed, my, more growth mindset approach. Move away from the fixed mindset. 
Another thing about looking at whether we have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset is to take a little look back at ourselves because this applies to us as parents as well as it does to our children. Very often as parents we can be very hard on ourselves and we tend to look at our parenting from a more fixed mindset approach. So if we can step back and think, am I being a little bit hard to myself in my own parenting? Give ourselves the benefit of the doubt a little bit. It can really help us make this shift. I want to read to you a little quotation here. And um, if you have been to any of my talks, you know I quote this lady all the time. Her name is Bunny Ladatan, and she is an author from America and um, who writes an awful lot about parenting. And she wrote this back in about 2017. And it relates to parents, but I think probably specifically more to us, us as mums. Um, but it would relate to parents either way. And this is her view on what parenting, how to be a good parent, is in, the, in 2017. And it most definitely applies to us today as well. So I'm just going to read this out to you. How to be a mum in 2017. Make sure your children's academic, emotional, psychological, mental, spiritual, physical, nutritional and social needs are met. While being careful not to overstimulate and properly medicate, helicopter or neglect them in a screen-free, processed food-free, GMO-free, negative energy-free, plastic-free, body-positive, socially conscious, egalitarian, but also authoritative, nurturing but fostering of independence, gentle but not overly permissive, pesticide-free, two-story, multilingual home, preferably in a cuddly sack with a backyard and 1.5 siblings, spaced at least two years apart for proper de development, and don't forget the coconut oil. And she says then, how to be a parent in literally every generation before ours, feed them sometimes. The pressure on us as parents is huge in modern times. And we have to remember, in order to encourage resilience in our children, we have to let them know that we sometimes get it wrong, that we view ourselves as work in progress, that when we make mistakes, we're not overly critical of ourselves, that we view mistakes as a learning opportunity. So if we can look at our parenting with a growth mindset, we are showing our children, we're modeling for them the behavior that we want them to take on board. We're letting them know that all of us are work in progress, that we accept that sometimes we get things wrong, but what do we do? We get something wrong, we step back, we reflect on it. We, maybe we feel the pain of what we have done wrong in that moment, or we have regret for what we may have done in that moment, but we then step back and we reflect on the process. So instead of seeing this as a failure and something that has you know, drastically gone wrong in our lives, we step back and we think, okay, what can I learn from this? And again, this is something, if we model it, we talk to our children about this. When something goes wrong, we step back and we think, yes, it's part of the learning process. And by doing that, we are really encouraging them to come back to this growth mindset. And what difference will it make to them? It will let them see they have some control over their world. When they are faced with difficult situations, instead of thinking, there's nothing I can do, they're aware, no, I need to think, what possibilities are there? What could I do in this situation? And they believe they have some power, they believe they have some control, some personal responsibility. And when times get tough and our children need resilience, having this mindset that I can make a change, I can grow, I can develop, will really support them when, when times get hard and they need it. So definitely I would encourage you to talk to your children about what a fixed mindset is, more importantly, what a growth mindset is. Talk to your children about the fact that our abilities, our intelligence are not fixed in stone. They are things that we grow and that we develop. Talk to your children about the fact that effort produces outcome. 
the effort we put into something makes a real difference. We remember the power of the word yet. I might not be able to do it now. I might not be able to do it yet, but potentially there is potential out there for improvement, potential for growth. When things go wrong, I won't think about what I should do because I know that limits me. Instead, I will think about the possibilities, what I could do because the possibilities are endless. And when I'm faced with a difficult situation, if I've been learning to do this over time, I will realize I do have power. I do have control over my world and I am indeed resilient. I can come back from adversity. I hope very much this has been helpful to you. Again, thank you to Meath County Council Library Service. Thank you to the Healthy Ireland at Your Library Initiative. And um, if you do want to learn uh, further, I post a lot on my Facebook page, Dr. Mary O'Kane Early Years, or on Twitter, at Mary O'Kane, at M-O-K Early Years, um, where I post further information there. Thank you very much.